Hi everyone, my name is Russell Garwood. I'm a lecturer here in the Department of Earth and Environmental Sciences. And today we're going to be covering evolution in one of your workshops. So I guess the first key question is, well, why am I well suited to be delivering this workshop on evolution for you today? Well, I'm a paleontologist. I spend a lot of my time using high resolution CT scanning to investigate fossils, so evidence of ancient life. That's everything, in my case, from um, potential fossilised bacteria, some 3.4 billion, billion years old, that's 3,400 million years old, through to some of the earliest creepy crawlies on land, some um, fossils from 320 million years ago. So I have some experience at looking at the evidence of evolution in deep time and using that to try and build evolutionary trees of interesting organisms. But also, in recent years, I've spent a lot of my time uh, writing some pieces of software that simulate evolution. So these are bits of software that have the, the key principles of evolution in place and then allow us to run experiments within the software to try and understand processes that occur in evolution and then the patterns that result from those processes. So for both of those reasons, based upon my research, hopefully I'm relatively well placed to provide you with this workshop on evolution today. Another key question you may be um, <clears throat> wondering is kind of, well, what will we be covering? Well, the idea behind this workshop is just to cover the core basic principles of evolution for you. So we're all um, building off the same knowledge as we uh, go through the rest of your degrees together. And in particular, some of you may have, for example, covered much of this material in uh, your previous studies. And if so, hopefully there won't be that much here that will come as a surprise to you. But I think it's always worth um, the opportunity to go over these topics again. I'm also really honored to be providing this uh, material for you today because evolution is a really, really important topic. This is one of the most important topics in fact, I believe, that you will cover over the course of your first year with us here in Manchester. That's because evolution is a theory that underpins all of the life sciences. Anything to do with living organisms, evolution is the key theory to help us understand um, what is going on. But above and beyond that, evolution is massively impactful in other areas as well. There are lots of elements of the physical sciences that lean quite heavily on evolution as well. So to choose just two examples for you today, um, for example, we have the field of biomimetics. This is a field of material science. Researchers who are trying to make new materials to serve the needs of us humans that are actually building on the outcomes of billions of years evolution. These are materials which are built by studying the living world, looking at solutions to problems that occur in living organisms, and then trying to make materials that mimic those. So that's biomimetics. Another area of the physical sciences where evolution has really a key impact are is um, in the world of computer sciences. There's this whole class of algorithms which use the basic principles of evolution to help us achieve our ends in terms of whatever computational system this algorithm is working within. So those are just two areas in which um, evolution impacts on the physical as well as the life sciences. So long story short, I think this is a really, really important topic for us to be covering, and I hope that uh, it's going to be interesting for you. So without further ado, I'm going to carry on recording these videos for you. So let me just set up my screen. There you go. You can see me hopefully in the top right hand side here. These are my slides you can see in the screen here. And we're going to start by having a quick look at what we're going to be covering over the course of the next four or five videos. These are the same as the material that I will be delivering in the uh, actual workshop itself. So these are here as a backup in case you weren't able to make the, um, the Zoom session or if you want to go over the material again. So I hope they're useful um, for that reason. I won't be um, uh, providing any recordings of the discussion uh, regarding the exercises um, because these kind of uh, are something which you will be um, contributing to in our Zoom session. So this is all of the uh, learning material for you here today. So um, 
in the next few videos, we're going to be looking at the following topics. First, we're going to be having an introduction to molecular and morphological evolution. So by molecular evolution, I mean evolution at the level of the DNA, which is inside the cells mm -hmm. of um, li all living organisms, depending on whether you believe um, viruses are living or not. That's not something I think it would be useful for me to get into right now. But do ask if you have any questions in the Zoom session. Um, and by morphological evolution, I'm talking about the, the evolution of anatomy, the morphology of organisms like uh, us humans, we have hands, we have limbs. All of those are morphological or anatomical traits. In the second video, we're going to be looking at variation within living communities. We're going to be looking at the sources of variation and we'll quickly um, have a look at its heritable nature. We will, in the next video after that, be looking at competition and fitness in the context of evolution. And then we'll be looking at natural selection. This is one of the key um, concepts that underpins the theory of evolution. And we'll finish by looking at speciation and evolutionary trees, which are sometimes called phylogenetic trees. So that's a quick rundown of what we have coming up. And as I've already highlighted, I just wanted to finish this introductory video with a quick note about how important this is again. And I've chosen for this a quote by a, um, a famous uh, scientist, Zbzanski, which is that nothing in biology makes sense except in the light of evolution. So this really is a key topic. It, evolution frames and explains everything you will learn about life over the coming years of your course. For example, all of the biodiversity in the world outside um, is the product of evolution. Things that impact us on us greatly as humans, such as antimicrobial resistance and diseases such as HIV and cancer and indeed coronavirus and all of these variants that we're worried about at the moment, all of these are the result of evolutionary processes. Our agriculture is heavily impacted on um, by evolutionary forces, and so are things like life's responses to climate change. So there are all of these broad areas where studying evolution can help us better understand the world around us. And so for that reason, I think this is a really, really exciting thing to be teaching today. And I wanted to start with just one of a huge number of examples of just how complex and impressive the outcomes of evolution can be. The one I've chosen for you today is based on um, organisms called slime molds. So these are a group of organisms that are closely related to fungi, plants and animals. And they're really, really cool. You can see a um, 19th century um, illustration of these on the left hand side of this slide here by a gentleman called Ernst Heckel. And you can see a photograph of a slime mold in action on the right hand side here. And the reason I think these are really cool is because of their life cycles. They have these really, really interesting and to us as um, animals, quite unusual life cycles or life history traits, which are a really good example of how um, complex the results of evolution can be. So when food is abundant, many slime molds exist as single celled organisms. Um, they are single cells. They are taking advantage of the food that is available to them. If food is limited, however, those single-celled organisms can congregate and then they can start moving as a single body. When they are doing so, they are sensitive to airborne chemicals so they can detect food sources. So we've got a, a situation where we've had multiple individual cells coming together and acting a bit like, for example, um, in, in appearance, these creatures look a bit like a slug. They move around looking for food, trying to detect food sources. They change the shape and function of parts of this single body. So, for example, when they have found food, they can form stalks. So those stalks um, produce fruiting bodies. Uh, these are uh, the sexual stage in their life cycle, so they're asexual for most of their lives. But then when this occurs, when they found food and they provide these stalks, they go through a sexual phase of reproduction. Those spores are then released from these stalks that are formed by these multicellular bodies, they're carried on the wind, 
and then the single-celled part of this life cycle resumes. So you've got this creature that's single-celled for the vast majority of the time, apart from when it's under environmental stress, at which point it behaves like a more complex multicellular creature in many ways. So that is one example of the power of evolution. And that brings me to the end of my introductory video. And I will see you back here in just a second, further down on the page for the first video in which we're going to be looking at an introduction to molecular and morphological evolution. I'll see you soon.